Science in pajamas. Boop. All right. So today we are going to actually be doing a special activity. See, in my class right now, or today, we're doing a demonstration of how to extract or take the DNA out of strawberry cells so that the kids can see it. And I thought, you know what? It's my plan period and I have an extra strawberry, so why not do a video about it? This way, if any of my kids are absent, they can still see the whole run through of the experiment, like what we're doing in class. So I just thought, you know, why not? All right, so here we go. Now, as I'm getting some stuff ready, a couple things to remember. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And what that means is that it is a nucleic acid, which is one of the four main biomolecules. Remember, they're nucleic acid, protein, um, lipids, and carbohydrates. And DNA is our genetic molecule. It carries all of the blueprints, the instructions for making us the way we are. And a lot of times when we mention genetics, kids always think, you know, okay, so it tells us our hair color, skin color, things like that. It's more than that. It also tells, you know, during fetal development, put the arms here, how many fingers to have, how long to make the bones, and how much growth plate should be in them so that they can keep growing after you're born. It says put your eyes here, your nose here your ears here. It's the instructions for making our digestive enzymes and our different neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. So there's a lot more to it than just eye color, skin color, hair color, etc. It's everything about us. All of that is included in our DNA. All right, so we are going to take a cute little strawberry. Close up my container. And then I'm going to grab a baggie. Now this is one that you can easily do at home. You don't need a lab to do this. So get all the air out. There, 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 there. And now I'm going to gently mash it up. Now what I mean by gently is, yeah, you want to destroy the strawberry. It's true. That's the fun part. But you don't want to be so rough that you destroy the baggie as well. So let's just make sure that we you know, break it up. I'm going to mash it and try and get all those chunky bits squeezed down. And after, you know, give or take one to two minutes, as much time as you need to get it as mushied up as possible. So mushy, mushy, squishy, squishy. There we go. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take 10 milliliters of cold water. Now, again, you may not have a way to measure milliliters at home. Maybe you don't have a graduated cylinder, but it's going to be, you know, about one to two tablespoons of cold water. Doesn't have to be super cold. Could be from the faucet on the coldest setting. The nice thing about this lab is that you it's not one of the labs that you have to be super precise on. So if it's more than 10 milliliters, that's okay. If it's less than 10 milliliters, that's okay too. I'm gonna pour that into the bag. We are going to take a good squirt of just regular dish soap. So not a lot, I'm just gonna turn it upside down. Squirt, done, that's all you need. Then I'm going to take a little bit of salt, you know, not much, you don't need to go crazy with the salt. So, not a whole lot of salt, put that in there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of meat tenderizer, because meat tenderizer has a particular enzyme in it that helps to break apart membranes, like cell membranes and nuclear membranes. Don't need a whole lot, you know, about as much 
as you put for the um, as much as you have of the salt. Put that in the baggie. All right. Sorry, just checking on something. Okay, good, good. All right. So what we're gonna do now? We're gonna close this up, getting the air out of it as we go. Push the air. And we're going to mix it all up and continue mushing it. So again, you don't want to be so rough that you bust the bag, but you want to get it all nice and mix it up. All nice and mix it up. If you're worried that it's a little too sudsy, maybe you're not sure if you put too much soap in, then you can always add a little bit more water. Nice and mixed. Here we go. We have our mixture. Now at this point, it's, I mean, I wouldn't eat it, but it's not that there's necessarily anything poisonous or, you know, dangerous chemicals in there. I just don't think that strawberries, soap, salt, and meat tenderizer would taste good. That's just me though. All right, next we're gonna take a cup. Now, since again, I'm in the science lab, I'm gonna use a beaker, but you can use any cup around the house, like a mug or something and a coffee filter. I'm gonna kind of poke it in a little bit. And if you're worried that you won't be able to hold it steady while you pour your mixture in, then what I tell my students they can do is they can use a little bit of tape and just secure it to the outside. I know I'm a little bit clumsy at times, so I may, you know, while I'm pouring this in, I don't want the coffee filter to drop in and have everything in the mug. I want to pour it through the coffee filter so that the liquid is in the mug, but we try to not get any chunkies in the mug, or in this case, the beaker. Now, if you do, or if it falls or the coffee filter breaks, then all you gotta do is get a clean cup, another coffee filter, and then try it again, transferring into the new ones. It's also where it gets a little messy, so fair warning. Okay, I'll pour it in. Okay. It's looking pretty good. So you can see that's in there. What I want to do now is I want to gently kind of squeeze the coffee filter so I can get the liquid down, but not much of the chunkies. I want to try and keep as much of the solids in the top. So you do want to squeeze it kind of slowly, otherwise it can kind of splurt everywhere or rupture the coffee filter. as much of the liquid as I can without getting the chunkies. Ah, got a chunky in there. Bend that out in a little bit. Yeah. I, I don't like having sticky hands. That's the only bad thing about this lab. Man, my hands all sticky. I don't like that at all. I'm a little OCD about it. I hate having sticky hands. So this is going to bug me until we're done with the lab. Alright. I did get a little bit of a chunky in there. So I'm going to try and get that chunky out. 
Got a couple of these inoculating loops, so. down, put this over there. Now I'm going to get my test tube. Now again, I know we may not all have test tubes at our disposal, but you can also use like a small cup or anything like that. So, got lots of options. I'm going to use the test tube though because with it being thinner, it'll show you or it'll be easier for you to see the separation of the DNA. I'm going to pour the liquid in. You don't need a whole lot of liquid, so if you don't have a lot, that's fine. Okay. Grab yet another paper towel. Got more stuff on my finger. All right, so we have our strawberry juice. Now what you're gonna want is some cold ethanol. So I have some actual ethanol here. You can use rubbing alcohol, so isopropyl alcohol. Um, the higher the percentage of it, the better. Uh, put it in the fridge at least an hour before you wanna do this. It doesn't have to be cold, but it does help. It just kind of speeds it up. So I have micro pipette, or not micro pipette, I have a little pipette. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply squirt some of it in here. Again, it doesn't have to be super exact. Maybe about like two teaspoons worth, give or take. Doesn't have to be a lot. And we're just going to let it sit for a little bit. We don't want to stir it together. We just want to leave it as is. Because what's happening is the cold ethanol is less dense than our liquid. So it's going to settle at the top. And as it settles on the top, it's actually going to pull the DNA that's dissolved in our liquid. Remember, the meat tenderizer broke apart the lipids. So the lipid cellular membrane and nuclear membrane. So the DNA was free and just dissolved in the liquid. The cold ethanol helps to pull it out of the liquid and suspend it in the ethanol, where it's less dense and we can very easily get to it. All right. Doesn't need much time since I had mine in the fridge. You guys ready to check this out? All right, let's see some DNA. So you can kind of see how it's separated. Now, obviously, the more liquid I had in there, the better, because I would have had more cells and a larger amount of liquid, and I'd be able to get more DNA out of it. But I should still be able to get some out of it. You see how there's like this weird layer at the top? Kind of looks off color, almost like foam, but doesn't really look like foam. That's the DNA. So what I'm gonna do is, Ta-da! We have strawberry DNA. Now this is from multiple cells, quite a few cells actually. And my, I always tell my kids, you know, what is DNA? And like, the instructions for making a strawberry plant. Then they always ask me, does this mean we can plant the DNA and make a strawberry plant grow from it? I'm like, no, it's just the blueprints. It's just the instructions you still need the rest of the cell to carry out those instructions. So it's not a seed, but it does have all of the in instructions you need to create a strawberry plant. Everything that it is, is right there. And our DNA looks the same because our DNA is made up of the same stuff. Deoxyribose sugar, phosphate groups, and of course the four bases, adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. So our DNA looks just like this. Now this is in chromatin form, not chromosome form. So this is when it's all kind of super coiled in the nucleus when the cell is not going through mitosis. But there you go. That right there is DNA. That is what it takes to make a living organism. All right, my ducklings. I hope you found this educational and informative. And if you 
have any questions, let me know in class, in our Google Classroom, email, etc. But until next time, you guys, stay safe, stay healthy, stay curious. All right, you guys, take care. Thank you for joining me on this special Science in Pajamas in my classroom. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.